There is always this stillness, this pause in the slow, revolving motion of the world that I feel on the eve of Sowain. This is the beginning of a new year for us spiritual people. And as a druid, it's like my body lives to the beats of nature. So today, I want to share with you the ceremony and death rites of my people on the evening of Sowain. I'm Mako, druid and Gaulish practitioner. And for you today, I'll share with you the ways of a Gallic witch. I'm a Gaulish polytheist and a druid, and as such, the holidays I celebrate are related to my community and differ from Wiccan or Witchy Sabbath from slightly to very different. I celebrate the three nights of Samonius, which mark the beginning of the year, that special transition between light and dark times. It's the most important time of the year for honoring ancestors paying tribute to our tribe members who went on to the next stage of their eternal lives and performing death rites for the tribe members who passed in the last two to three years depending on regional variations. Typically, a celebration of this holiday will vary depending on how many people participate, what your local community has adapted from the larger tradition and if you're an initiated druid or just a Gaulish believer. For me, it all started the first night by dressing up in my ceremonial clothing after a full body cleanse and a time to dedicate the festival to the gods and goddesses it honors. So while I lit up the fire, I put my prayers in my mouth and blew them on the flames, calling upon Sukelos and Nantosuelta by name so they be present for the whole duration of the festival. Then I set up the ancestor altar. It's mainly composed of photos of departed, symbols of the season and festival, meaningful keepsakes, offerings of food and items, some form of smoke maker and dead things. On the second night, I cooked a meal, chanting while I worked, infusing my worship in the food and consecrating it for the names of my gods and my ancestors. The table is set for the living who will be eating and plates for those who left in the past year as we believe they come back to first festival after their death to check on us. We can't call them by name for the three nights when we address them as we believe that would cause them to be stuck in the Dumnos and not be able to reform.
finally, on the last night, I lit up dozens of candles and left them in front of every window so our loved ones can find the way home to spend the rest of the festival with us. What followed was a ritual I can't share here with you, which included, among other things, a long prayer and dedication to Sukelos. My neighbour participated, since she was invited, and so she had a candle of her own, and I included her in the ritual to honour her dead, so I could guide them on that night. This is a deeply emotional time for me and a very important celebration. I take extremely seriously my role as a guide and a healer and spiritual presence for my community. I'm happy to share a little bit of my culture and practice with you. The candles burned all night and the ancestral altar had a candle and an incense burning for the entirety of the three days and nights. I painted candles for each of my lost tribe members and consecrated a candle to my gods with prayers, sigils and chants written all over it and then I left it to stay on the ancestral altar and be burned for the duration of the festival.
I wish you all a blessed dark season and may Sukelos and Nantosuelta watch over your ancestors. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to learn more about Druidic practice and green witchcraft and I'll see you soon. Bye.